welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. Your uh, weekly, no, not weekly, bi-weekly, <laughs> fortnightly podcast for all things guitar <laughs> and gear. You go, dude. <laughs> oh, boy, it's going to be a rough show. I can just see it now. Woo-hoo. All right. I'm Chris, and with me tonight is Jesse. Hello. All right. And uh, wow, that's a that's just a bad start. You know, I was thinking, starting off with a bang. Yeah, I was thinking, don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. And what I did, I screwed it up. Oh, well, it's, at least I got the right show. It's been psychologically studied that when you focus on not screwing up, you tend to. Yes, that's that's the, the, the uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the hypothesis here. You know, folks, uh, other than my screw up, if you like what you hear tonight, uh, please, please consider clicking subscribe or like on iTunes, YouTube or however you're listening to us. Leave us some feedback. Give us some show suggestions, whatever you feel like. We'd love to hear from you. And if you like hearing him screw up, let us know that too, because he'll sing and dance for you anytime. <laughs> Absolutely, I can I can screw up for an entire half hour show. That wouldn't help you a problem. In fact, I think we've had a few shows where I screwed up for half an hour. We, we have. No one's the wiser. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> maybe now we have a smart audience. They're probably aware of uh, all of my mistakes. <laughs> so they're just too polite to comment on them. So uh, all right, folks, um, let's get into this uh, show here. Jesse, what have you been doing this week? Uh, what have I been doing? <laughs> Playing guitar a little bit, uh, yeah. mostly just um, uh, what was I working on before? A little bit on the uh, on the Mr. Big song that I had been working on before, so nothing new there. Um, playing along with some YouTube stuff, and not really anything new. Just playing guitar. Yeah. So there you are. Yeah. Um, I did have a little eBay adventure that I'll tell you about later, but first, let's talk about what you've been doing. Uh, what well, I've been doing, and we'll talk more about this later as well, is trying to overcome the motivation monster. <laughs> It's just been, uh, I don't know, the last week I have not been motivated. Overcome the monster. He has beaten me into the dust (laughs) years ago. (laughs) Actually, I guess it's time flies. It's been more than a week because I meet with my instructor every other week. And the last time I met with him two weeks ago, I remember talking to him about motivation problems. So I guess it's been a couple weeks now. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I'm still playing. Uh, I just don't know constructively. Uh, I've been working on some YouTube stuff, uh, some uh, minor pentatonic licks, major pentatonic licks, really the major pentatonic licks, because I just don't do enough major pentatonic. And I'm not as comfortable in that scale as I really should be. I think that's common. Yeah. And I want to fix that. Um, I've been working on Circle of Fifths. And uh, my instructor had recommended that I should look at that so we could – have more uh, intelligent conversations about scales. Mm-hmm. So I memorize the circle of fifths and understand sort of the, the number of sharps and which notes are sharp, the number of flats and which notes are flat. And I can't, you know, recall instantly like with flashcards, but uh, I can count in my head and sort of match up for now and figure the more I do it, the better I'll get at it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. And I um, had my, a meeting with my instructor just today, and he said that I need to loosen up my playing some, which I totally agree with. I'm a very stiff player, and I'm not talking like physically stiff, like when I play. Mm-hmm. I'm talking um, I'm very uh, rhythmically stiff. Right. And so I just need to loosen up my rhythmic playing. And I think my new way of holding the guitar is going to help with that. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, so most of my listen- listeners probably don't know this, but I learned, or when I started playing guitar, I was resting the guitar, guitar on my left leg, and I'm a, I'm a right-handed player. So it's almost like a classical style setup. Mm-hmm. And that g- gave me good access to um, the high notes, but it sort of made the well, playing on the low ne- end of the neck kind of awkward, because I was playing up, I guess for those who are in video can see, I was playing up here which is just can be a little strange. I didn't realize it was strange until I started putting the guitar on my right leg. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, Hey, wait a minute. The guitar neck's now lower, uh, strumming and certain things like that becomes a bit easier. Uh, but access to the high frets becomes a little bit more challenging, especially on my Les Paul. Right. And access to high, the low strings, excuse me, is also a little bit more of a challenge, uh, on the Les Paul as well. I've noticed and I think these are things I can tweak and overcome. I've spent the last four and a half years playing on my left leg. Uh, so I should not really imagine mastering right-legged playing overnight. Right. That's true. 
Yeah, that's an interesting uh, thing because uh, and and when you told me this, I was kind of like looking at what I usually do, and it's a mix of the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of like a lot of the time when I play, I'm kind of kicking back on the couch, and it's not the most ergonomic way to play guitar anyway. Right. <laughs> right. So like I'm running some scales or playing some licks or whatever I'm doing while watching you know, a YouTube thing or while, you know, uh, watching a movie or TV show or something like that. And, and I remember that's kind of the way I've played guitar a good substantial percentage of the time, like throughout, you know, my history, a lot of it hasn't really been okay. Now I'm studying guitar. <laughs> it's usually like, I'm going to dork around on guitar while I'm doing something else, you know? Right. Right. And so, uh, and a lot of that's been like just left leg. Cause I'm going to kick back on the couch. That's just how it fits, you know? Um, or standing up, of course, and it's standing up. So actually not that much of the time to play on right leg. Um, so yeah, it's good. Of course, um, you know, we were talking about this too. It's like, there's a very different feel from playing low neck to the high frets, even no matter how you hold it. So there's always sort of a difference that your hand and your body just gets used to. So yeah, everything's worth trying to see how you, um, kind of adapt to it. Yeah. And I want to give this, uh, right legged like playing a shot. I do find though that I, I I have been resting my left hand on my left leg as I'm playing because my guitar neck's low enough. Uh-huh. And that's really bad. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's and I've, I've come like, you know, some quick chord changes in songs, like, you know, you shook me all night long, for example. It's a pretty quick chord change from GC. Yeah. And yeah, if your hand's resting on your leg, just you're not gonna pull that off. Right. And, and so um yeah, a couple of bad habits there I've already developed and then I catch myself I have to say that with my SG, uh, I still like to play that resting on my left leg. Just because of the weight distribution of that yes. guitar. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking seriously about turning that into a slide guitar. Hmm. Yeah. You know? Um, sure. Seriously thinking about doing that. Uh, Derek Trucks plays an SG on slide. Yeah. You know? I think it's good enough for Derek Trucks. Good enough for me. There you go. You could turn yeah. anything into a slide guitar. Sure, sure, absolutely. I like the idea, though, of being able to get really high on the neck with a slide with the SG. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And tunematic bridge is, you know, pretty good for that. So yeah, easy yeah. to raise the strings up and uh, or off and running. So um, yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Uh, trying to find a new song to play. I've got a bunch of new books: Hendrix, Clapton, Zeppelin, and I just need to pick a tune and dig into a tune again. I think too. Yeah, now you've got like uh, over you know, your cup runneth over. Ah, books. Totally. So it's gonna yeah. like, it's like choosing from the beer list or something. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> where, where do I go? Right. <laughs> Which is why I'm thinking about the slide. Because I'm thinking about um, actually going for uh, Eric Clapton had this album. One of my favorite, Eric, probably my favorite Eric Clapton album is From the Cradle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really always wanted to learn It Hurts Me Too, mm-hmm. his version from from that album. And so I have the, the book for that album. And so what I need to do is take one of my guitars, tune it down to D, and just leave it there. Right. And open like an open D tuning or something like that. Just leave it there because it's all slide in D. And so that way it wouldn't be like, well, I don't want to learn that song because I don't want to go through the process of detuning a guitar, blah, 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 <laughs> blah. You know, set one up, put it in D, leave it there. Which is what I was thinking for the SG. So. Well, that's why you need one of those Tronicle systems so you can just oh. uh, go to it. Yeah, yeah. Either one of those, like there's Tunematic or not Tunematic. What is it? The um, the Gibson ones. Yep. Can't think of the top man. Or there's even that Roadie tuner. Have you seen that? No, no. Is okay. that similar? It, yeah. Well, no. It's um, it's basically you know what a uh, it's basically like an automatic tuner that you put on the tuning head. Okay. And so you can, uh, you know, you basically hook the uh, roadie up to your phone and the phone, I guess they communicate by Bluetooth. The phone listens to your string mm-hmm. and turns the tuning uh, peg uh, to the appropriate position for it to be in tune. And then you remove the roadie and you put it on the next peg. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not sufficient. <laughs> I want something where I can – and I, the Tronicle, I think you just strum the whole – all the strings. Uh-huh. But even if you had to do it one string at a time, that's fine. I don't want to be moving a piece of gear and – no, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say open G, open D, just detune to E flat so I can do the Van Halen songs or whatever and then strum and have it just do it. 
The problem is none of my guitars are standard makes. You know, I mean, Tronicle, they know that there aren't enough Parkers and Courts and whatever I have <laughs> sold right. out there. But right. I'm looking at the bank of Fender slash Gibsons behind you. It's like, <laughs> you could buy one for these I know. things. <laughs> I know, but I mean, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to drill into a headstock. Oh, see, this is the problem with having Fender and Gibson. <laughs> but I don't think – I don't know that you do have to drill. Did you look at the thing? It looked like it just fit under the tuning pegs from the backside and then it was mounted by the tuning pegs being mounted uh, as they are. Huh. I could would be I, wrong about that. I would be comfortable with removing the tuning pegs. I would help you. the device and putting the tuning pegs back on. I would be comfortable doing that. We need what to, I'm okay. Doing is breaking out a drill and starting to drill into one of my guitars. I don't, I'll do the drilling. <laughs> I mean, I don't care if it's like my Epiphone Special One P90 that I bought for a hundred bucks, right? <laughs> that just freaks me out, you know. I'm uh, drilling into the uh, the headstock. It, it bothers me a little bit. Yeah, given my experiences with drilling into the headstock, I guess I understand your point. <laughs> see it now you know i'm working in my office and and all of a sudden i go crap my wife comes in she goes you ruined your guitar didn't you? <laughs> so of course would be yes because i have the sense to not drill into my headstock so yeah i'll look at this tronical thing and if it doesn't remove it doesn't involve like drilling into the headstock then we're golden i'll, I'll, I'll i would be happy to give it a shot then you have to choose which guitar is going to be the detuning special. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I have pined over, I pined over for a long time which guitar I was going to keep in, you know, the E flat tuning. Have you gotten there? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. The, I for, the Pacifica. Right, right. Okay. So. Yeah, I keep that. It's permanently tuned down a half step. Beautiful. Yeah, but it took me forever to make that decision. I can't imagine how long it'll take me to say, all right, which guitar am I going to remove the pe- tuning pegs from and put the Tronicle thing in? That's right. A decision. Well, I vote for the uh, the hollow body Les Paul, just so you know. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That could be the one. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that could be the one. Yeah. Although it's a pretty guitar, I really don't want to screw it up. I think I, well, if it, is, if it only uh, requires what we're talking about, then you there's no way to screw it up. It'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, that could be, yes. I'm sure I'll find it. <laughs> right. That's an excuse to buy another one, though. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. Speaking of buying another one, so <laughs> I'm on eBay and um, I'm looking for. So I have a Steinberger uh, Spirit, which is um, generally sold for four hundred dollars, and this is um, an all wood guitar in the shape of the original Steinberger guitars and basses. Which, if you've ever seen these, are commonly called the broomstick because it's. Uh, I don't know if I've ever brought it to your house, to be honest, but. Um, Imagine a guitar that is the length of essentially from the nut to the bridge and then just a couple of inches behind the bridge because like mine has a whammy bar and the tuning pegs, tuning uh, tuners are on the bridge side behind. It's kind of cut out behind the bridge and so you can access there. And then the body is very small. I mean it's it, it's like – I don't know. At the widest point, maybe eight inches maybe nine inches. And um, so it doesn't really sit well against your leg or anything, but then they have this little fold out uh, leg rest thing that works really well considering. And, um, and then the neck at the top, um, it, the strings just lock there. There's no tuning pegs on that side. So it ends like a half an inch after the nut, which makes it a very short guitar. It's not much more than the scale length of the guitar. So the whole thing is like, I don't know, 27 inches long and it fits in a very small case. Those, you can throw it in overhead, you know, an airplane, whatever. Um, so uh, I wanted a second one (laughs) because the one I keep at work uh, because, you know, for, when I'm working late at night or something like that, sometimes I can be in the, uh, well, don't tell anybody at work, but <laughs> if I'm in the control room and I'm just having to monitor, uh, you know, some kind of presentation or something, I can play some stuff, you know, and I'm still there and I have control of everything. It's just, I can, like I say, noodle while right. I'm doing something else. Right. And uh, so I wanted a second one to leave at my parents' house for when I'm watching bad local news, which they seem to be addicted to. <laughs> I know my dad listens to this show, so good on you, dad. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I get this, I get the deal and I get it for $200, right? Which is um, really nice. You know, I figured that's a good price for me. And uh, 
And so I get the box in and I open it up and it's a little small. I'm like, wait, what is this? It's wrapped up in this towel. It turns out to be a, an electric machine gun BB gun. And so I'm like, what? yeah, that was my experience. I'm like, what? <laughs> and so the things go through your head. It's like, did I get scammed? It's like, actually, this is a nice BB gun if I cared about that sort of thing. Right. <laughs> you know, right. but uh, of course, I don't know what, the, what these things are worth or anything. So um, when I go to write him, I, I send him a message and I say, hey, this is a BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> Before and, and I send it off, and immediately something comes back. So he had already been composing this his message saying, "Hey, so the guy who I supposedly sent the BB gun to got a guitar. So obviously I mixed you guys' shipments up. Um, well, it worked out well. I mean, so the guy um, refunded my money plus fifty dollars in shipping, of which I only I actually refunded the shipping part of it that he refunded me because it was much cheaper than that. And uh, so I sent it back. And when he gets the guitar back, he's going to go over it, and make sure." it's the same and we'll continue the deal <laughs> but it was just like yeah disappointing you know yeah but at least it wasn't like a scam or i didn't you know i've been still pretty lucky with ebay and i and i still kind of count myself there and hopefully i'll end up with this thing anyway and i'll come up and show you with you know the thing. cool it sounds like you know like christmas morning you know you wake up your kid and you <laughs> box and you're pretty sure it's a transformer and you unwrap it it's a like, gobot like <laughs> You know, or, a, or a book. <laughs> God forbid, a book. Yes. Aunt Betty got me a book. That's right. <laughs> or, or bunny pajamas. Oh. <laughs> so, actually, I, I had GoBots too when I was a kid. I liked GoBots just fine. So, if there's any like GoBot loyalists listening to our show, we don't need the hate mail. You know? <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> You're inferior, but still, no hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. I was actually not as a kid. I, I was too old, so I wasn't into either one of those. So, what was on when I was? Oh, it was. All, I was like, I don't know, Smurfs or something. I wasn't into them, but that was what was going on when I. Sure. I'm too old. Okay, onward. Next. Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey. Okay, so uh, motivation. Yeah. Uh, boy, I've been trying to get sort of just motivated. I think I've had a lot of go- things going on at work. Mm-hmm. which has been distracting my mind away from guitar. Yeah. Uh, so when I come home, I'm thinking about like work stuff or working on work stuff and not doing guitar stuff. And I think several nights in a row of that has sort of just drawn my attention away from guitar a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that's probably what's going on with the uh, motivation monster more sure. than anything else. You know, it's not, it's certainly not that I'm no longer enjoying playing. Um, that's not the case at all. I think there's just the last few weeks, too many things on my mind other than playing guitar. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's been that way for me too, just cause we've been so busy and we've had a few big weekends. And so by the time you get home, you're, you're brain fried enough that it's just like, not that you don't, I mean, I pick up the guitar, I play the guitar, but it's more therapy than I want to learn something. Yeah. Cause I really don't want to think. <laughs> Yeah. I, want, I want to play the things that I can already play and play well so that I feel good about something. <laughs> yes. Which, of course, then you're not making progress because no. you're doing the stuff you're really good at. But I've been doing the same thing, you know, picking up, oh, I'm going to play this song or that song or, you know, and it, I, I, I think that's one of the struggles of being uh, sort of an adult uh, player who is not a professional player. I'm sure professionals struggle with motivation too. Don't get me wrong. I know I struggle with motivation for my own work sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, having this as a hobby, it makes it tough to, like when you're in high school, you have nothing to do but play guitar all day. Right. You go to, you go to school, do your homework for whatever, however long that might be. And mm-hmm. then you just play guitar the rest, and nobody cares, right? And that's just what you do. But, you know, as an adult, there's so many other things going on that it does make it tougher to – I've actually seen this in person. I, a friend of mine um, has a kid who started playing about the same time I did. Mm-hmm. He's way better than I am. Right. You know, uh, and that's because he's a kid. He's got time. He's yeah. got time. Right. You know, I, you know, I play more than probably most people my age as a hobby because uh, I don't have kids, so that gives me an outlet, some t- more time to play. But there's no way I can compete with, like, you know, somebody who's playing nonstop all the time, like after work or after school or whatever. That's true. I mean, I, I learned more or at least got better technically in so many ways um, over summers, like in high school. 
Mm-hmm. And it was a really lucky that I got started that at that age because, and particularly, you know, we've talked about this before. In that age, there was no uh, far fewer rather um, things to take your attention. You know, distractions. I mean, today it's just so hard because there's so many distractions. Of course, as you noted, if, if you aren't distracted or if you can, uh, or just more interested in guitar than anything, then yeah, the tools are there today. And if you have the time, boom, it's really awesome. But, you know, it's it's true. But although you say it's a, it's an interesting thing because you say not professional, but I wonder about professionals because it's such a, a big range of what pros do. Because um, I would read articles about you know, like my guitar heroes back in the day, and some of them were very studious and would, you know, pick apart solos by their heroes and, and be able to play them, you know, note for note and, and all that sort of thing, very technically oriented. And others would be like, you know, I don't want to cop other people's licks because I, if I do that, that's what I'll play and I want to be unique. So I just do my own thing and maybe they'll do some scales or what I mean, they had some technical ability or they wouldn't have been my guitar heroes, you know, right. but they were coming from sort of a different place where if you said, Hey, play this Hendrix or, you know, any of the big heroes of you know their era or before they'd be like, no, I can't do that but I can jam on this song that, that my band does and it's phenomenal. So they put sort of more of their energy into, you know, creativeness, you know, whether it be recording, writing songs, constructing solos, whatever. And, I, and there's no right or wrong, right. but it's kind of interesting because I don't know, we could say, well, what did we do this week? And it's kind of like, well, maybe we recorded an album, but I didn't learn any new, you know, anybody else's songs. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of... Well, like I, said, I didn't want to speak to professionals <laughs> because I have no idea what they do. Like that's beyond my my scope. Well, know? I mean, I'm strictly speaking from knowledge of you know reading interviews with various right. people, right. and it and it goes cr- across genres too. I mean, um, uh, and I don't want to get this wrong, but I think it was Schofield who who said, "Yeah, I don't listen to guitar players. I don't know what other p- players play." Like they were asking if he knew any West Montgomery or, or or Charlie Christian like licks, and I know he's played some of the songs that those people have played. Um, but maybe he didn't cop any of their licks. I mean, it's just like, well, here's the head, here's the chord changes, and I'm going to do my own thing. And um, and so I always wonder. It's like you know, I've, I've read that like Van Halen was big into Clapton, but it's like, how much did he know? Did he know any uh, Jimi Hendrix songs, or you know what I mean? Right. Not right. that anybody would care. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> he knows all the all. Van Halen songs, you know. So. Right. But it's still interesting to know, like you know, these people who are really good at what they do, what motivates them what interests them right you know um if for any other reason just get sort of an insight into the the mind of people who are excellent at at what they're doing uh, i think that's kind of fascinating and how Uh, much of it was maybe just more inspiration than technical kind of you know copying or whatever right right absolutely absolutely so, um, yeah, so the motivation monster has been rearing its ugly head, but I'm hoping to get back on track. I got a couple of things I want to work on here in the very near future, hoping that it will uh, sort of, yeah, get over this hump and get back into playing. Oh, Otherwise, so- I'll just have to quit my job and play guitar <laughs> professionally. That well, would- you do have a big break coming. <laughs> I do. I do have a big break. I can test the waters in a new profession. Uh Yeah. No, that, you know, that could be it. You just say, you know, if in a year <laughs> I have a successful record career, <laughs> maybe I could hang up the whole physics thing. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yes. Uh, I hope my boss isn't listening to this. He's like, I, I promise I will be doing what I said I would be working on while I am. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, yeah, we don't need to get into that. But yeah. So, yeah, motivation. And it's a it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. But uh, like I said, it's, you got to get back. The only way to get back on track is to just keep pressing forward. There are some who would say they need to. Uh, I, I think Jake Lee was the one I remember saying this. He's like, yeah, we come off tour and I don't can't even look at the guitar for like three months. Mm. And he says, I just I do other things. I'll run or I'll do you know other things. And then when I come back, it's with a fresh vision and whatever. He says, yeah, technically I got to you know, spend a few weeks getting the chops back. He says, but they come back and then I move on from there. And it's just a kind of a refreshing thing. So maybe this is your, that (laughs) maybe, maybe I should just put it away for a week and then uh, come back to it. It's a, yeah, it's like reverse psychology. Yeah. You know, just hang a sheet across those guitars and don't even look and just say, I can't touch the guitars for, for a week and see how much you want it after a week. 
I'll have to hang a sheet. Because, you start shaking. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because if I see them, I'm like, oh, man, I spent money on this thing. I should be playing them. That's like my mindset, right? Oh, there's no should. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I, should on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, folks, audience, I hope you're uh, getting something out of this uh, 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 show tonight existential like, crisis existential crisis maybe you're going through an existential crisis too i don't know <laughs> uh, of course you know if you don't like what we're talking about you can always email us let uh, us know jestercat.com and let us you know know what kind of uh topics you would like us to talk about you can also tweet us at sst show and uh offer advice offer topics just say hi whatever you know, plenty of ways to contact us, but please contact us. We'd love to hear from you. I have a so, birthday. Oh, you have a birthday. It's not my birthday. Okay. But it's a guitar player's birthday. And I want to get in before you did, said the pick and grin thing. All right. Yes. So this is Paul Gilbert, oh, who yeah. is one of my favorite of the 80s shred metal, you know, hair band days. Uh, his birthday is uh, November 6, 1966. And um, so go – Paul Gilbert, it's spelled as you'd expect. So go um, Google him, get some YouTube shots. He, his original band was called Racer X, and I think there's some videos out there from the 80s uh, when he still had spandex and hair down with halfway down his back and all that. Um, and then he was the guitar player for Mr. Big that had a huge song with one of these um, power ballads, To Be With You. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, so – also, um, Just Take My Heart. I don't think that was as popular, but there you go. And so two huge hits with that stuff and then a lot of like really awesome playing. And he, what's cool about him is he always had a sense of humor about stuff. So he was a technical wizard, but he just – he's like, yeah, this is guitar playing and yeah. <laughs> so he was always goofy. Yeah, I think great. he has uh, some videos online too, instructional oh, videos. Yes. yes worth checking out as well. So yeah, well, happy birthday then to Paul Gilbert. Uh, of Racer X and Mr. Big Fame. So, all right. Uh, I believe with that, it's time to wrap things up. Sweet. So, folks, if you have the motivation this week, <laughs> just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Cult. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 